Hello everyone, I am Mr23 and today I'm going to tell you the story behind this new design that I just created. Let's start by hiding all the layers that I've created. We are starting with this photo and because we have some balloons in front and some in the back, first thing I right click on the image and I convert it to a smart object. Then I went to filter and from here I chose blur gallery and fill blur and it will open this setup so if you see those circles those small circles they are point of blur so if you click somewhere on the image and you can decide the amount of blur that you want to have because i have this balloon in front this has the smallest amount of blur and the other ones have larger amount of blur okay so this is what i did here with this blur and then I added some shadows because I have the sun in my left and the shadows should be on the right part so I added a curves adjustment layer you can select it from here curves and then decrease let me hide this one then decrease the lights and from here you should invert the selection you can do that by choosing this invert or you can press the shortcut Ctrl or Command I. All right. So after that, you will have a black mask, which is the inverted mask. Then take the brush tool and choose a soft brush. And you can paint with the color white. And you will add shadows only on the parts that you paint. So this is what I did over there. All right. Let's move on. So I added the shadows and then I added another layer. So this is the image that I've used. I added a mask and I try to hide everything that I don't need in my picture. And because I had those branches here on the right side, I added a new layer. I took the clone stamp tool and then I press alt and I started to draw here on this part so I can hide that area. So that's why this area we don't see it in the final composition all right so this is what i did here let's come back all right and of course because the original picture was uh, really sharp i added the same blur effect yeah and then you can see uh, it blends better with the top image all right let's move on then i added uh, another layer with the grass okay let me double click on it so this is the original uh, layer with the image and i also added a mask and i paint it yeah with black and i hide everything that i don't want to appear in my final composition all right and then of course i applied the same blur yeah as you can see i applied a small blur here on the bottom and some blur on the top then I added a selective color adjustment layer and I open up a bit of the colors. I made them more um, saturated and then I drew some layers with some haze. Yeah, I created this fog effect on top of our background. Okay, it's really easy to create the fog. Okay, you can you create a new layer and then take some fog brush and decrease the opacity and of course the flow and you start to paint and as you can see it adds some nice fog effect all right so i created two layers first one is set to blending mode soft light because i want it to be really soft and on top i drew another one which is set to normal then i added a small shadow on the bottom i created a new layer let me explain you really fast i created a new layer i took the brush tool don't forget the flow should be really small i paint it with black something like that on the bottom and then i set the blending mode to soft light and double click on the layer and from here let me hide the other one so you can see better so from here choose the blending method and now we are going to blend better our black color with the background so hold alt or option and click between those sliders and then drag the left slider to the left as you can see on the screen my black color is blending better with the background so this is our shadow layer 
Then I added a new layer, I set it to screen, and I painted with orange on top, all right, something like that. So I painted with orange, and I set the blending mode to screen, then double click, and this time I'm going to use the blended method, but to the other side. So hold Alt or Option, click between the layers, and then drag the left slider to the right, all right. This is what I did here, and then at the end I desaturated everything by using this color lookup, which is futuristic bleak. Alright, so this is our background setup, and now let's go to the next phase. This is the little boy that I've used in my composition. Of course, now it looks really cool, but the original picture looks like that. So uh, let me show you. This is the original picture, as you can see. There are two boys on a beach and now I selected the left boy because this is a really easy selection. You can use uh, Photoshop object selection tool or plus W and then just drag a rectangle and it will select the boy. Zoom in. As you can see, there are some small things to do also and you can take the lasso tool, hold shift and add those, area, those areas that Photoshop didn't include. Just hold shift and select the areas that you want to be included in your selection. And as you can see, this area, Photoshop didn't select it, so hold Alt or Option and then just select that area and it will add it to the selection. Of course, now I won't spend the same time because uh, you can do it on your own, but this is the process. Hold Shift if you want to add selection or hold Alt if you want to subtract. All right, so this is the selection that I did very fast and then just press the mask and here it is it is selected all right so this is what i did here i selected the boy and then this is the selection in the normal color mode and then i added a small shadow underneath him as you can see this is the shadow and it is set to multiply to add a shadow there are many ways. One of the fastest ones is this one. So you have your layer selected, create a new layer underneath. All right, let's call it shadow. And then hold control or command on your layer and it will select the layer. Go to the shadow and now press G or the paint bucket tool and fill it with a color which is close to the blackest color on your background. So hold Alt and choose a color which is, let's say, this one. And this is your selection. Now press Ctrl Command T, right click and then flip vertical. Drag this shadow underneath him, hold Ctrl or Command and drag the right corner to the right. As you can see, it will add our shadow. Of course, now you have to put it on multiply, then decrease the fill and here it is. Now you can add, let me hide the other one, you can add of course some blur effect. So go to filter blur and choose Gaussian blur. Alright, so this is the shadow and then add a mask and paint with the black color to hide parts of the shadow because the shadow is less visible if it is farther away from the subject. All right, so this is how I created a shadow. This is the shadow. And then I drew some hair. You have another tutorial that I just created last week, how to draw fur on an animal, but you can use it for hair also. So this is the hair that I just drew. It's really easy. You just create a new layer. I'm going to do it really fast. Take the fur brush, for example, make it really small and then play with the flow. The flow should be really small at the beginning, so drag a sample by holding Alt or Option and then start to paint on top and it will draw some hair. Of course, you have to adjust the colors all the time to have different colors that are the same colors from his hair. All right, so this is the hair that I created here on top. All right, and then of course, it doesn't look that uh, the colors match with our background. So I created a new, a new layer, which is 
shadows and lights and you can do that by creating a new layer from the top go to layer new and then choose new layer the mode should be soft light and fill it with 50 percent gray and now if you take the paint tool and the soft round brush and black is for shadows and white is for lights so decrease the flow and if you use the paint now you see it will add some shadows on the little boy because i use the black color if i want to add lights i will use the white color and it will add lights so this is how i created the shadows and lights okay now for those layers i added some small lights and you can do that in this way let me explain you how i added those small lights double click on your layer on your boys layer go to inner shadow okay and now let me increase the size so you can see it and now the blending mode is set to multiply but one of the best blend modes for this light is to be set to screen and then if you choose a color from the background let me choose this one for example as you can see it will add some small lights to the sides of the boy then you can check this plus sign and add another one and make it bigger and choose another color and it will look like that so after you created the inner shadows now right click on the effects and choose create layers and it created the layers and now add a mask to each one and start to paint where you want to hide those lights so for example if i paint with black it will hide parts of that layer all right so you can do that with both of them because here on the bottom for example we don't need that light and there are some other parts also where we don't need that light so this is how i created those two layers all right so those are the two layers that i created using that method and then i added some more lights this is another light as you can see because you we have some lights coming from the left top part from the sun i added some small glow using the normal brush and i just painted on the side so just create a new layer call it light and then just take the brush tool pick a color from the eye and then just paint on the side on of the kid so this is how i created that small light i just painted carefully painted on the side and then here on the back also just pay attention and it will add some small lights this is how i did it so those are the lights and then another one another big one and i use it that method that i just showed you in the beginning with the blending so i blended the color much better with my subject so hold alt click between the layers and just increase the size between them all right so this is the, another light that i created and then i added here the selective color adjustment layer because this one i use to match the boys colors with the background so this is a a very nice process but it takes some time you go to each color and you play with the colors that are involved in reds yellow greens cyan's blues magentas whites neutrals and black so you can play around with each color so you can carefully match match that color with the background so at the end you will have a nice blending with the background color so i just played with each colors and i made little changes to each one this is the selective color adjustment layer and then i added some more shadows to the overall look of the kit it's really easy you just add a curves adjustment layer you decrease the light and then invert the mask press ctrl command i on the mask and then take the brush tool and with white you can paint on the part that you want to be more darker all right so this is what i did here with this curves adjustment layer and then i added some more lights on the boys blue jeans and it's really easy it's the same method that i just show you you just paint on the sides that you want and you have the lights over there so this is how i blend the little boy to the overall 
background image. Now let's move on. We have this picture of the squirrel. All right, now it looks really well, but it didn't look like that in the beginning. So let me hide everything. So this is the original picture of the squirrel. Okay, this is the original picture that I have. It's a PNG. All right, and then I also did some small adjustments. Of course, I added a shadow. I just show you in the beginning how I added a shadow. So this is the shadow. It's really easy. And then I drew some fur beneath the squirrel and on top. I always do that. I drew one layer on top. So this layer is on top and this layer is underneath. So I can have more flexibility with the hair, with the fur in this case. Just check my previous tutorial with how to do that on an animal, how to select an animal with a fur. You just drew fur on top of the original fur using the same colors that the animal has on the sides. All right, so this is the squirrel with the shadows and the fur added. And then I added some small lights. This is one light that I have. Yeah, it's easy. Don't forget after you drew the light, use this blend if because otherwise the lights are too strong. So this is a normal brush. I just painted on the sides and then I hold Alt or Option and I dragged this to the right. As you can see, it's a really nice method to have your color blended better with the layer underneath it. All right, so this is light number one. This is light number two. It's the same, same thing. So if you double click on the layer, you can see we have the same blendive method. Now so the last light, it's a um, white light. So the whole image of the squirrel looks much better now. And then I did the same thing that I did with the boy. I used the selective color and I played with each color to match your photo with the background. Then I added some more shadows. I explain you how we can add those shadows and more shadows, but this time using levels. So for those shadows, I use curves and for the last shadows, I used levels. And then at the end, I added another shadows and lights, but this time I use the soft light method that I just show you in the beginning. Here, as you can see, I use the hands of the squirrel and I use a mask and hide some parts of the hands because I added this biscuit in her hands or his hands, I don't know. So it's um, really easy. You start by using this um, biscuit. Yeah, it's a PNG. And then I added some shadows using the exposure this time so you create a new layer let me show you so let's hide let's hide this one create a new layer go to exposure and decrease the exposure and then invert your selection press ctrl command i and invert that selection and then take the brush tool and paint with white and here it is you can show the areas that you want by using the white color now then I added a huge saturation to all the biscuits and I used the same color. So this is uh, the color now. It's a um, magenta color that I loved to have on the biscuits. And then I added some huge saturation this time, but I added more lights to my overall image because as you can see here on the left, I have more light coming from the sun. And here on the right, it should be more darker. So that's why here on the bottom part is darker and on the top part is lighter. And then I added the final uh, shadows and lights using the soft light method. You can use also dodge and burn method to add shadow and light, but I prefer the soft light method more. All right, so at the end, I added a small shadow underneath the square hands because as you can see, it should, it should have some shadows because without the shadows, it looks fake. All right, so this is how I created that uh, biscuit eating. So this is what we have until now. I found that the design is not ready. So I added more biscuits overall in the final composition. So let me explain you how I created all those biscuits. So as you can see, I have one here further away. This is the layer with the biscuit. So let me hide what I did. So this is the normal 
png file with a biscuit but it doesn't look realistic so i added a mask and then i used a soft brush so i painted here on the bottom as you can see from the distance it looks like it's blended better with the grass so this is the mask then i added a gaussian blur effect and because it's further away it should be more blurred so that's why it looks like that and then i have those two adjustment layers that i'll keep to each of the biscuits so first of all is the shadows one let me show you really fast how i created this so create a new adjustment layer with hue and saturation and just decrease the overall lights and then go and paint on the parts that you want to hide so this is the way we have our shadows in the back because we have the sun in the left so in the right part we should have the shadows so this is how i created a shadow and then i use the same color with hue and saturation to each of the biscuits so those two layers i'm going to keep to all the biscuits so this is the biscuit in the back and then i have this one over here i apply applied the same method yeah with the both adjustment layers so without those two layers the biscuits are not looking that well so you have to add shadows and also the color should be the same all right so this is uh, what i did here i applied that uh, gaussian blur effect yeah and then let's move on i did the same thing to all the biscuits so this is another one but here i didn't apply that much uh, blur because my image is really close to the subject so i really didn't need that much blur we can add for example you can go to filter blur gaussian blur and here we can choose something like 0 .0 0.3 for example all right so we can add a small blur here also and the fourth one is this one here here i used something else for the mask so because the biscuit looked like that i needed a grass tool a grass brush to hide it better with the grass so let me do it again let's delete the mask so add another mask go to the brush and take the grass brush and then just start to paint all over and as you can see it will match it better with the background just using one brush all right let me do it again let me come back to the original layer and then after you do that press on the mask and add a filter blur gaussian blur to the mask because as you saw my uh, normal brush is doing something really really sharp and i don't need that sharpness to the mask so go to the mask choose filter blur and just use gaussian blur and it will blur the grass of the mask much better all right so then i added the same shadow that i explained you and the same color magenta color and here i added more shadows and lights because as you can see the shadow it's more visible here in the back but because we have some sun rays that are hitting the biscuit i added more color to that side of the biscuit so as you can see i just paint it and then i just paint it with a normal soft brush and then i added the blend diff method here as you can see just draw with a normal brush and then use this blend diff method by using alt or option and drag the slider to the right all right so this is this biscuit let me hide it and then this one here that is close to the squirrel i did some other things also because you always have to take care of the light sources so in this case we have the light source that is coming from the top so this is let me take another brush so this is the light source okay so this part should be a lighter and this part should be darkened so i used the same things here the grass okay so i use the grass tool all right i started to to draw like that and then i used the filter blur and gaussian blur to make the mask a bit blurred 
not that sharp. All right, and then I use the same layers that I kept, the same adjustment layers, and then I added more lights and of course more color. So this layer, it's just a normal layer. Let me show you. Let's hide this one. So as you can see, the sun is a bit orange or yellowish, and now we need some that color on our biscuit. So create a new layer and place it inside the biscuit by holding Alt or Option. All right, I, so this, uh, let me call it light. And now take the soft round brush and with a color which I choose from the sun, let's say this one, I'm starting to draw something like that. But of course the flow should be really small, around 8%. So this is how I created this light. So I just drew normally and then double click. And here I press Alt between this sliders and then drag this slider to the right. All right, so this is the way I created that light. Let me delete it. Okay, so this is the way I did this one. And for the last one, because it's the closest one from our point of view, I added the biggest Gaussian blur effect. So for this one, I didn't want it to be that visible, something like that. And I added a bigger, bigger radius. So it looks like that. And then for the final adjustments, let me bring back all the layers. So this is everything that we have until now. And I have final adjustments. All right, let me explain you what I did here. After I finish, I always use the selective color. Because if I use the selective color, I can blend all the colors in my composition better to make them look like a whole. So when you do a photo composition, it's really important to take care of three things. Perspective, shadows and lights, and overall colorizing of the whole composition. Most of us are using photos from different light sources, and when you put them together, they don't really look that well. Even if you have the most perfect selections, they don't look too well together because the overall colorizing of the image is not that well. So I use this selective color all the time when I finish to play with all the colors that are involved in my composition. So I take one by one, red, yellows, green cyans, blues, magenta, and so on. And also very important to play with blacks and also neutrals. Because if you drag this slider, as you can see, it will add more cyan to the overall composition. And then I added a curves adjustment layer because I wanted more shadow here on the bottom. So, and then I added more light. I always play with some blending modes. I always use color dodge, linear dodge, overlay, and sometimes screen or lighter color. All right, so I started with overlay. So this is the overlay. I drew some uh, sun rays here on the top left using the normal brush, and then I added Gaussian blur. So you can, let me explain you really fast. You can take the soft brush and choose a color. So this is the soft brown brush and have a really small flow and just drag some rays by holding shift. As you can see, if you hold shift, it will draw a straight line. So after that, just go to filter blur and Gaussian blur and add a bigger blur. All right, so those are the rays that I use here and I set the blending mode to overlay. All right, so this is the layer. Then I duplicate it and I use the soft light to blend it much better. And then here I added another one, which is color dodge. You have to take care of this color dodge because it's one of the most powerful blending modes in Photoshop. So as you can see, this is without those, this color dodge and this is with color dodge. So let's do it together. Create a new layer, set the blending mode to color dodge and be sure that you have the brush selected and then the flow should be really, really small, something like 5%. And then if you click just once, it will add small lights to the sides of the subjects. As you can see, I want some lights here on the sides and with this blending mode, it looks really, really nice. And then again, on the top, I use this linear dodge. Let me show you. A normal brush, I paint it with this color, all right, and then I set the blending mode to linear dodge. The most important thing at the end is the camera row filter. 
I press Ctrl Alt Shift and I. This is doing a screenshot of all the work that you have in one layer and then right click convert it to a smart object. It's really important to convert it to a smart object. I always say that in the tutorials because all the filters that you apply to a smart object you can always come back and modify the settings. If it's a normal layer and you apply the camera row filter for example you cannot come back again to the settings. You can you have to take the whole process from the beginning. So go to filter and choose camera row filter. All right. So I'm going to show you the settings that I've used in my camera row filter. So depending on your composition, you have to play with all the settings here. For my composition, the important thing was to decrease the contrast. I increase a bit the highlights and the whites. And of course, at the end, I added some texture and I increase the dehaze. I play it a bit with the sharpening and noise reduction. And at the end, I added some highlights and some shadows. This is the color for the highlights and this is the color for the shadows. And then I only use grain effect. I told you in my previous tutorials why it will add a much better blending if you have more images from different sources. But sometimes if you lack in inspiration, you can go to profile and choose browse. And here you can choose one of the presets that Photoshop has to offer. As you can see, some of them are really, really nice. Now I want to add more sharpness to my whole composition. So just create again a new screenshot from all the layers. So Ctrl Alt Shift and I to create a new layer from all the layers. Go to filter and then other and choose high pass. And then choose a small radius, something like 1.4. And this will help me with the sharpening of the whole image. And then the blending mode should be set to vivid light. As you can see, it's more sharpened with the high pass filter than without. And then I added color lookup at the end and I set it the uh, opacity to 20%. It's Kodak by 218. And at the end I added my logo on the balloon and I added some uh, motion blur so it looks like it's on the balloon also. So I hope you are understanding the process that I'm using in creating my designs. If you have any questions, please don't forget to write me and please follow me on Instagram also. You have the links in the description. I hope you liked the tutorial for today. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.